you for it, Lord. Come on, just enter in a little bit here, Church Alive. Just enter in. I tell you what, the Holy Ghost is in this place. If I needed something from the Lord, right now is the time the water's being troubled, and I just receive it today in the name of Jesus. For surely the presence of the Lord, He is in this place. Come on, we know this song. Let's declare it today. Let's affirm what the Lord is doing right now. Come on, let's sing it with the team. Surely. Of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. above all that we are that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and then the apostle closes the prayer amen verse 20 he says to the Lord Unto you, O Lord, who is able to do what exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Don't forget the next part. According to the power that what worketh in us. Wow. There is a mighty power that is working down on the inside of us as spirit-filled believers today. Can I get a witness? The power of, that works within us. We're then able to look to the Lord who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could imagine, all that we could put on our list of asking for. And according to this, all that we could even think about. He's bigger. You know, I just want to say it like this. God's bigger than my box today. You know, sometimes we may not even do it consciously, but unconsciously, we might have God in a box of some pre-notion, some pre-understanding uh, of who God is in our life, our experiences with God. But let me tell you something about God. No matter what my experiences are with God and no matter how long I've been serving with God, I might think I know how great and how powerful and how exceeding his, He is, His grace, His mercy, but my finite mind cannot totally comprehend all the greatness of Him today. Hallelujah. He's God. He's sovereign, he's holy, and he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that I could ask or think. And guess what? He can do that through you and through me and through our life according to the power of God that works within us. That's really what I've come today to talk about for a few minutes is God working in us, God working through you, God working through me. How does that happen? Well, first of all, we have to understand that we have been giving as believers full access, a full access pass into God's presence and thus 
able to tap into God's power. Anybody believe God is a great, great, big, powerful God today? If you have access to the king, then you have access to the privileges of the king. And I'm here to tell you this morning, Jesus has made it possible for every person, every believer, every blood-bought child of God by the working of the Holy Spirit down inside of their inner man, their inner spirit, able to not only access the presence of God, but also to access the power of God. All of heaven is at our disposal, not because of us, not because of our work, but because of what Jesus did at Calvary's cross some 2,000 years ago. He has, oh hallelujah, he has deputized you, authorized us, given us dominion today to do the works of God and to see the exploits of God done for the kingdom of God and for the glory. What am I saying? I'm saying God's bigger than my box. God's bigger than your box. I think I know how big my box is, and I think, man, God, you're big. And God said, uh uh, I'm bigger than your box. I'm bigger than your thinking about me. I'm bigger than your understanding about me. You need to keep reading the book. You need to keep on your knees in prayer because the longer you serve me, the greater revelation you're going to receive of how big God truly is. Oh, somebody help me give this God praise today. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. The Bible says in verse 5, let this mind be in you. Let this mind, everybody say my mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and he became obedient unto death even unto the death of the cross now I want us to really look at these next three verses here I'm talking about Jesus Jesus had it all Jesus gave it all up and now Jesus offers it all did you catch that Jesus had it all he came to earth he, he gave all of heaven up for a season to come on this earth why so that you and I who had nothing and were impoverished in our sin and iniquity now by the atonement by the cross of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit we who had nothing can now be the sons and daughters of God joint heirs with Jesus Christ oh how many is glad you're a king's kid today a king's kid access to the king access to God's power is what I'm preaching about today and we see how great he is in the next few three verses wherefore God Talking about Jesus, can let this mind be in you. Well, what mind? Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. I love verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can I tell you something? He had it all. Amen, and he gave it all up for us for a season so he might offer us who had nothing, everything. And can I tell you, there's coming a day when every knee is going to bow, every tongue is going to confess, amen. He humbled himself as a servant. Let that mind be in us because one of these days at the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, amen, the church is going to be ready. She's going to be a bride adorned for the groom. And when it takes place, let me tell you, throughout eternity, 
eternity, I can see them lined up. Every knee is going to bow at some point. Every tongue, every race, every kindred, every religion is going to bow. Some will bow, I believe, because they're under submission to him. I believe some will bow, amen, because while they may have missed it, they now understand he's the holy one. He's the great one. He's the one I thought I had figured out, but I didn't know really much about him at all. He's the one that they're going to sing. This is the one who's worthy of my praise. This is the one who's worthy to be glorified. Can I tell you something, church? I don't want to wait till then to bow before him. I don't want to wait till then to worship him. Can I tell you, he's worthy to bow before now. He's worthy to worship now. He's worthy to submit my life to now. He's exceedingly, abundantly able to do above and beyond all that I can ask or think. And he's worthy for me to bow in his presence and to worship at his feet and to declare his lordship in my life. If you're glad he's lord in your life one more time, let's let the king of kings, this is what we're going to do then. We might as well get started now. Amen. Glory and honor and praise to the king of kings and the lord of lords. Oh, I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm glad I have access to a supernatural power, God's power, by way of Jesus. And today, more specifically, Jesus lives in us as believers by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I thank God for that. And today, I want to give us a few little reminders about this topic accessing God's power well you know there's a lot of things that people strive for to have more power power grabs they call them politicians want more power amen certain leaders always looking for more power certain groups want more power but I come to tell you what, the devil would like to have a little bit more power, hello. But I come to tell you something, God has all the power. Jesus has all authority. And he allows us to have access through him to that same power supply. There's a few little things I want to give you. Number one, if you write things down, I want you to write down, God's people have the power of praise and worship. Do you hear, Pastor, today? You may not recognize this as a weapon or as something powerful in your life, but I come to remind you that you have a great power supply in your life as a believer, and it's the power of praise and worship. I don't know if you recognize it, but especially when we come in corporately together as a church, Church Alive, and we begin to sing the songs of Zion, and we begin to worship, and we enter his gates with thanksgiving, and we enter his courts with praise, you can just feel the power of the Holy Spirit begin to be magnified among us. I feel strength when I worship you. I, when I worship with you, I feel encouragement when I worship with my brothers and sisters. Why? Because there's power in praise and worship. What do you mean? As long as that praise and worship is directed to the right one. How many knows his name is Jesus today? Amen. When we come together, and worship the Lord there's power in that no wonder Psalm 150 declares praise the Lord praise him in his uh, beauty praise him in the firmament of his power praise him for his mighty acts praise him according to his excellent greatness and you know the psalm you've read it many times it talks about praising him on the instruments I think I may have mentioned it Wednesday night praise him on the cymbals praise him on the harp praise him on the high sounding cymbals praise him on the strings instruments. Uh, praise him on the organ. Praise him on the psaltery and harp. Amen. And then it gets down to the last verse and it says, guess what? If you don't play an instrument, God hasn't left you out. Amen. He's given you a voice. How many's glad? I mean, Pastor Doug preached a few uh, weeks back, a month back or so, about the so far and the, the, the praise and worship that comes out of the depths of our spirit and our soul. Can I tell you, he's given all of us breath 
today and Psalm 150 declares, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Do you got to praise for God? Uh, people praise him on the ball fields. People praise him on the soccer fields. People praise him. Uh, amen. Uh, people praise people on the soccer fields and they praise other things on, on the games and all the other. But can I tell you, I want everybody to know I'm not ashamed to praise God. I'm not ashamed to lift my voice. I, I've got a voice. He's given it to me. Amen. If darkness can proclaim darkness, uh, then us of the light ought to be declaring the works of the light. Uh, God is the glorious one. God is the powerful one. God is the one who's worth. And when you begin to do that, let me tell you something. The devil starts shaking. The devil gets nervous. Uh, amen. Why? Because faith begins to rise up. And when faith rises up, fear has to go in the name of Jesus. I've come to remind somebody today, you have a powerful access to God. And hey, how we access God is we access him through the power of praise and worship. The Bible says uh, he inhabits uh, the praises of his people. If you want God to show up in your life, just start praising him. Start adoring him. Start worshiping him and see if all of heaven doesn't open up to your life. Oh, come on, somebody help me praise him one more time. Psalm 34, I love that psalm. You might find Psalm 34 for a minute. Psalm 34, he said, I will bless the Lord, the psalmist said, at all times. His praise shall continually be, verse 1, in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I love verse 3. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Why is that so important to the psalmist? He said, I sought the Lord, verse 4, and he heard me and he delivered me out of all of my fears. Can anybody say you know a God like that today? Verse 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Amen. The angel of the Lord encamps round about them that fear him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now jump over to verse 18 and 19. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. He saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Why, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Watch this. But the Lord delivereth him out of of them all. I don't know about you, but I got a reason to praise him today. I got a reason to worship him today. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, del this poor man cried out. No wonder he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, now's not the time for the church to, to quit praising him. No, this is the time for us as the body of believers to praise him and worship him with all of our heart, with all of our mind, and with all of our soul this morning. Hallelujah. We invite full access to his power when we praise and worship him. Number two, if you write things down, we have access to God's power, not only through power of praise and worship, but through the power of the blood of Jesus. Sherry just sang about the blood. I want to say a few things about the blood of Jesus. First of all, as she sang the song, it went right along with what I have to share today. The blood of Jesus is a cleansing power. A cleansing power. You don't have to answer this, but have you ever had uh, clothing or something, a carpet, or something and it got a stain and you just couldn't get the stain out. Anybody like that? I mean, you did, you did everything. You just, you know, you washed it, you, you put the shout, shout it out, you know. I used shout it out so much, I got so tired of that, I just started shouting at it. Come out of there, you know. It didn't work. That thing was stubborn. It wouldn't be removed. I don't know what I got on my pants, but it just wouldn't come out. 
But can I tell you, that's the way a lot of people's lives are before they come into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. They do a lot of things to try to get rid of the stains in their life and the hurt and the pain and the, and the ugliness of life. But can I tell you, just like there are only some things that have removed stains out of your clothes or out of the carpet, you got to get something really powerful with some real cleaning agents in it to lift it up out of that material. Can I tell you, there's only one one thing that will cleanse you and I and set us free uh, out of bondage, out of addictions, out of iniquities and that thing is the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, anybody glad the blood is still a cleansing agent? The blood is still a purifier? The blood is, oh hallelujah, he's my cleanser today. First John says in First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Somebody say praise the Lord for that. Revelation chapter 1, 5 and 6 says to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood unto him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 1 John 1 and 7 says but if you and I will walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another. Watch this. And the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us us from all sin. Hallelujah. It's the praise and worship that gives us access to the throne, but it's also the blood of Jesus uh, that gives us the authority and the access into the very presence of God. Uh, I feel like singing a song this morning. Uh, there is power, power, wonder working power. It's in the blood. Uh, come on somebody. It's in the blood blood of the Lamb. It's a soul-saving power, a soul-cleansing power. Amen. Jesus can do what the counselor can't do. Jesus can do what the doctors can't do. Jesus can do what the lawyers don't know what to do. If your sin is sick, if your soul is sick, let me introduce you to the greatest power on earth. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He'll cleanse us and he will redeem us today. Oh, come on, let's give him praise again in the house. That's a good place for a praise break right there. Hallelujah. It gives us access. You know, it's really interesting. Mark 15, verse 38. The Bible says that when Jesus was on the cross and death, he gave up the ghost. The Bible says, he said this last words were, it is what? finished and at the same time I believe about simultaneously over in the temple there was the curtain of division in the holy of holies in the courtyard and it was a dividing line that basically all through the Old Testament was there for the unique purpose of saying there are certain boundaries in God's presence. If you study it all out, there was a place for uh, just the ladies to worship. There was a place in the courtyard for the men to worship. There was a place established for the priest to go. And some uh, could enter into a, a further inner sanctum and, and the Holy of Holies. But then behind the veil, behind the curtain, there was the holy place. And only the high priest could enter into the holy place once a year for the atonement of Israel's sins. But can I tell you when Jesus went to the the cross and he said it is finished. God said I'm going to show you what kind of power I've got. The curtain was torn from the top to the bottom Mark says. Amen. And it was ripped down showing to the world that no longer was it just going to be one class of people. No longer was it going to be just one gender of people. No longer was it going to be just pastors or leaders or priests or spiritually. No. Jesus broke the middle 
wall of partition down, gave us access by the blood that he shed on Calvary and said, whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life that I give for anybody glad today. You don't have to worship outside the gate. You don't have to worship only in the courtyard. You don't even have to just come near the curtain of the hall. No, today he invites every one of us into the holy of holies, into the throne room of heaven. And he says, I've given you power by the blood of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Come on, I want to praise him. I'm counted worthy. I'm counted worthy to come into his presence and to be cleansed. Anybody glad you're cleansed today? And not only cleansed, and I may not get through all this today. Is that all right? Uh, we'll bring it back next Sunday, Lord willing. But the blood of Jesus also not only cleanses us, but it redeems us. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 7 says, In whom we have redemption. Talking about Jesus. Through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. I mean, he's glad God's bigger than our box today. Mm. Redemption, what a powerful word. The word redemption by definition simply means to buy back from indebtedness. Or another example would be a slave being in slavery on an auction block of slavery and being redeemed would be purchased off of that auction block. To be redeemed is to be Defined as something worth redeeming. Something valuable. It's interesting in the law, according to Exodus 21, verses 23 through 25 is my reference. The law said that when things occurred, the way you took care of the indebtedness, the way you took care of the offense, is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, Land for a land, feet for a foot, or foot for a foot, and burn for burn, and wound for wound, or stripe for stripe. In other words, if there was going to be a redeeming value, you had to do an equal exchange. Even in it came to areas of justice. You may not realize this or not, but in the Old Testament, the scriptures clearly show us that for a person taking the life and murdering someone with an unjust cause, the penalty, the consequence for that was they would be put to death. The death penalty. An eye for an eye. Tooth for tooth. Stripe for stripe. This was the law of God. This was what God had outlined during that season. But think about that in the terms of the redeeming work of Jesus on the cross. See, really, because of Adam and Eve and the fall of man in the garden... All of us are born into a world of, that's fallen. And when we come to a place of understanding, we're born with an Adamic nature. We're born into a fallen state. But let me tell you something. God has a plan so that we do not have to stay in that place of fallenness. Oh, hallelujah. And he had a plan the whole time, even under the law, when the redeeming value had to be an eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth. 
God had a plan he was pointing toward in the future. Can I tell you, when Jesus came onto the scene, all of humanity, they had a debt they could not pay. There was a price they could not afford. They were dead in their sins and their iniquities, thanks to Adam and the fall of man. But when God sent his son into the world, uh, John 3 and 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. They would not have to give an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, a stripe for stripe, but they would be given mercy. They would be given grace. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. I don't know how you feel about it this morning, Church Alive, but I'm glad when I had a debt I could not pay. When there was a price on my head I didn't have the money for. When I had a, a sin and a fallenness about my life uh, that I had no way out of. Uh, all I had to do was look up to Jesus because uh, when Jesus went to the cross, uh, he redeemed me. Uh, he already paid the price in full. Anybody glad the check's already writ been written? There's sufficient funds. Uh, there's power in the blood. Uh, not just to cleanse you, but to redeem you. And I come to tell somebody today, you're redeemable. I don't care what the devil's told you. I don't care what lies Satan has said. If you're breathing today, he loves you. If you wonder how much he loves you, just look at the cross. He loves you that much. You're valuable to him. You're redeemable to him. And by the blood of Jesus, he redeems us from our sins. I don't know about you, but I'm glad he took my sin and he cast it as far as the east is from the west, never to be brought back to my charge again. And today, it's only by the grace and the mercy of God. It's no longer an eye for an eye or tooth for a tooth or stripe for a stripe. We received a grace we didn't earn. We received mercy we didn't didn't deserve. God loved us. Jesus loved you and I so much that he willingly laid down his life for his friends. But can I tell you, Jesus said if I have the power to lay it down, I've also got the power to take it up again. And you're going to be redeemed one more time on that first resurrection morning when the dead in Christ shall rise. I'll have a new body praise the Lord. Oh, come on, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. If the redeemed of the Lord say so today. Oh, come on, stand up with me today. Man, that's enough preaching for anybody right there. Glory to God. Somebody say praise and worship. It's power in praise and worship. Somebody say blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Mm, we ain't got to all of them. How many knows there's power in the word of God today? Woo, glory to God. And there's power today. Listen, we'll pick this up. There's power in the name of of Jesus. Woo. Glory to God. Power. Power. Wonder working power. It's in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the Lord all over this room today. And let's just begin to thank Him a little bit for cleansing us and redeeming us and the access he gives us to the Father through his son Jesus. Come on, let's praise him, church of life. Father, we love you today. We thank you today. You're a great God. You're bigger than my box today. You're greater, Lord, than anything I could imagine, but it's according to the power of God that worketh within us. Oh, I thank you today, Jesus. 
Help us as the people of God to be reminded today of our identity and who we are in Christ. And to live that identity out every day in the marketplace of life. Oh, we love you today, Lord. Amen. Let's sing that one. Lagonda, are you ready? It's time to claim the blood of Jesus. Things going on. Oh, we can't forget Israel. Things going on over there, even as I speak. We need to claim the blood over God's people today. Amen? We need to claim, watch this. We need to be claiming the blood of Jesus over our own life every day. My mind my heart my spirit I claim the blood of Jesus because I'm going to tell you something whether we realize it or not whether we like it or not we're in a battle we're in a spiritual warfare but I already know I've read the book and I know who's won the battle and won the war. Come on, his name is Jesus. So when I claim the blood, I'm claiming victory. By the blood of Jesus. For it reaches to the highest mountain. Uh-huh. 
Jesus and everyone said, Amen. 